Hello and welcome to Fender Play Live. I'm your host, Eugene Edwards, coming to you live from Los Angeles. Today we have a Halloween special, in theory. We thought today we'd focus on a sinister gathering of notes, the harmonic minor scale. And don't worry though, we're gonna show you why this uh, spooky-ish scale is actually used in tons of uh, types of music and how you can use it in your own playing. So stick around, we hope you enjoy it. And helping me out today is our trusted friend, the always informative, Dylan Calajuri. Oh, Dylan. Hello, world. No, hi. Hi, Eugene. Hi, everybody. Wow, it's great to be here. Uh, this is a spooky subject, though. It so. is, because you're speaking like a visitor from another planet. Yes, that's what I was going Hello, for. Hello, <laughs> Earthlings. So, now, before we get into it, I want to mention we were supposed to have our good friend Dinesh on uh, for today's episode. He's in New Orleans, and of course, they have some weather coming. So uh, we need him to just to stay safe, and we want everyone out there to stay safe. Yeah. Um, so, so, and Dinesh, he'll definitely, of course, he'll be back for, for future episodes. Um, Dylan, uh, what guitar do you have there? Oh, yeah. So I've got uh, the new American Performer 2 with, in Miami Blue. So in case the color did not immediately give it away, it's uh, <laughs> it's blue. And uh, this is, this, you know, whenever I have this guitar, it's an eye-getter. So just if you ever wanted a guitar that catches the eye, I'll tell you what, the Miami Blue does it. Yeah. That's right. And, and the Miami thing's a shout out to our sound engineer, Ron, who's watching. That's He's right. a Miami guy. So. He's a Miami guy. So, okay, so let's get into today's topic. It's the harmonic minor scale. It's, it's, a, it's a haunting sound. And though it may sound lofty that we're going to talk about theory, it's actually very common in popular music. And we're going to show you some examples of it, how to listen for it and how to use it. And we also want to, as always, hear from you and hear your thoughts on today's topic. So start dropping any questions or thoughts in the comments as we go along in the show. Now let's... Um, Let's kick things off by hearing the scale in action. And Dylan, how about you scare us with some spooky face melting riffs? <laughs> okay. Here, I'll use a little uh, loop here. Let's see. That's the the neoclassical metal application of the harmonic minor scale, as you can hear. <laughs> okay, so we'll, we'll get into that. Okay, very well done. So we're going to take a step back from that and dive into what exactly we're talking about when we say harmonic minor scale. It's, it's not actually just, it's not only used in metal, but tons of styles and genres of music. So let's start with the basics. Dylan, um, play us a few examples of the scale in, in a, a couple of keys, please. Yeah, so here it is in the key of A minor. So... I'll play it in key E minor, so. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. There you go. That's what it sounds like. Now tell us what it is, in, in, you know, in a, in a technical way. Sure. In a nutshell, uh, you've got what's called the natural minor scale. So I'll play that for you in the key of A. And what we're going to do to make it harmonic minor is raise the seventh scale degree. So I'll count through and, and you can see where the seventh scale degree is going to be moved up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So here's the original natural minor and harmonic minor. So that's it. That's that's in a nutshell. That's what it is, basically. No, well done. It's, it's really this kind of just this one note difference really yeah. creates a different mood, right? So we're going to talk about right. this. Um, and by the way, uh, for those of you watching, if you want to dig deeper into the actual theory behind this scale and how to play it on guitar, we have lessons on Fender Play that will show you all you need to know. Uh, but let's get into the fun stuff and talk about where this is heard in modern music. Uh, well, we're going to pick up where we left off last week, We the Rolling Stones. Um, and they use it as the basis of one of their hits from a 19... 66, I believe. Let's see if we if we recognize this here. That sort of thing. So, Red. Black by the Rolling Stones. Um, 
it, the, the song starts with Keith spelling it out on his guitar. He, he spells out that harmonic minor sound and then they, it just runs through the entire song. In fact, it, it's so dominated. It's, it's so good as a hook and it's got such this, um, this dark feeling about it yeah. that Mick never deviates in his melody when he's singing. He sings that melody strictly the same way every time. Not until the end when he starts kind of riffing, but they, they adhere to this. So this is a great example though of a song that we've all heard a lot. We've heard this a lot and um, uh, we just, and we, we don't know that we're hearing something that's called the harmonic minor scale. Um, right. And, and so uh, in this, the song paint it black, it's a, it's a death song. And uh, so I think they wanted this dark thing. They want to create a dark and sad sound because the lyrics were already reflecting that. So, so Dylan, what do you hear with the progression of this song in, in paint it black and how the harmonics, why, why the harmonic minor scale is working here? Yeah, well, again, so this this uh, when you have this the progression that moves from E to D sharp back to E is is mm -hmm. the denotion of it. And uh, as you said, it's it's definitely pointing towards something black. It's it's used as an alliteration or as as like tone painting in this sense. And that's that's where you're going to see it used the the most in music. So if you were maybe applying this over an A minor, um, sorry, over an E minor chord as they are, you would probably do the same thing. And maybe in just a part of the solo you're playing, you would you would just barely point towards it. But in this case, the song, it's so flagrant that that's probably why Mick sang along with it the whole time, because it's just so dominant. It's something that you just can't deny. And, 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 uh, and sorry, my guitar overloaded there for a second. I, I got very excited about the, the topic. Well, who can uh, blame me? Yeah. yeah, and also, and and we shouldn't forget. So, so the chords that are happening there, as they as they do this scale in that song, it's E minor and and B seven and B seven, yeah. And that B seven chord gives us this ability to use that the D sharp, yeah, the D sharp. Okay, so again, we hear the guitar scale right in the and uh, we hear the the scale right in the guitar playing in the verse, and and they really. Uh, use it in such a big way. Let's uh, give us another example, Dylan. It's your turn of the harmonic minor scale in action. Can you play some Offspring? Yeah, absolutely. So, So it, it and it would actually this is this the cool thing about this is that it's all over the sort of a five chord theme in the key of B and uh, harmonic minor has its original scale itself and if if you're ever on the site you can check it out there's also what's called the modes of a scale or the the seven different ways you can play a scale which is really just starting from each note within the scale and from the fifth note in harmonic minor you have something called Phrygian dominant. Phrygian dominant. So if you ever just really want to impress people, you can just say, I believe that's Phrygian dominant, right? Um, but uh, <laughs> Phrygian, sounds like a fancy hat, actually. It does. It really does. It's a, it's a great cat name, by the way, if you ever wanted to. Anyways, so um, this this kind of scale fragment, this. It's a really famous sound here in tapping. Just to really annoy everybody that hates tapping, but uh, uh, you know, it's something that you hear, and it's the fifth scale of harmonic minor. So not only is harmonic minor cool, all of its modes are pretty darn cool, and the offspring definitely showed us that, uh, at least the the general public. Right, and we just know that we've heard, like in in come out and play by the offspring. There's it's it's used blatantly. It's it's. It's just a real, real. It's it's a it's it's in a spotlight, if you will. Yeah, right. No, just it's like paint it black. Uh, Can't get now, away from it. So uh, there are tons more examples in modern music of the actual harmonic scale being used in songs. So again, everybody, throw us some more uh, in the comments, and we'll mention them on the show. If or if you if you're wondering if you if you're starting to recognize the sound that we're playing, then and you think, hey, does this song have it? Then then go ahead and ask us, and, and maybe we'll know the answer. And again, all the songs we're playing today are up on the site. So. Now, um, now we're going to show you some ways that you can use it when when writing music and creating a progression, or even when you're soloing. And if, because uh, uh, if you notice in those first two songs, there's a distinct chord progression, and uh, we're going to see if you can hear it in a few more tunes. Here's uh, an example of it in one of my favorite songs by one of my favorite artists. Uh, I've got a little bit of a loop, and I hope this works. Uh, 
So in You Know I'm No Good by Amy Winehouse, her main melody, she sings this. That's her vocal melody. And you can I can actually play the harmonic minor scale, D and D minor, D minor harmonic minor scale over these chord changes in the verse. Apologies. I think that was cutting up my voice. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, so uh, I can use the, uh, those chords and that scale and maybe even kind of play a bit of a solo there and adhere to the scale, such as this. I was using uh, are in the the uh, harmonic minor scale there. So um, hopefully that kind of now. So the special relationship between these this distinct chord progression that we're uh, talking about is essentially uh, uh, a minor chord. In this case, D minor, and then the five chord being a major. So traditionally our you know the five chord in d is a uh, and but we're going to play an a major instead of an a minor so when we hear a minor a song in a minor key and the five chord is a major that's our tip off that's the mm. tell right yeah yeah because normally the five chord is made up of the scale degrees five seven and two in in in, in uh, any key and in the major scale, you have five, seven, two. Normally in minor, you have these three notes. But in harmonic minor, we raise that seven up, and you end up with a, a major chord. And that's that's exactly what you just spelled out. Perfect, though. So um, now we have a question coming in. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have you uh, demonstrate this over some changes as well as well. Um, someone's asking, what about many surf guitar songs? Oh yeah, tons, tons. In fact. It's it's definitely used as sort of a, a mystical kind of like, uh, you know, trapped under the water type of a thing or something that's sort of a, it's pointing to an escapism type of thing uh, when it's used over the surf stuff. And you can really see again that it's it's a tone painting thing, right? They're they're pointing they're pointing the listener to a particular place. Right. So in the case of what is it? Uh, uh, um, OK, if, if, you, you're, if, if there's a, a surf song going on and it's in a minor key, say like e, e minor and if the chords go from like c major to b7 yeah yeah and they just they literally quote the the scale a lot in surf i mean you can literally hear that's that that is the sound right there um someone's asking about jethro tull's aqua lung uh, uh, uh. This is fun watching watching guys try and figure out, out songs. Yeah, oh that's wow, a I got a weird six. Yeah, you know what? I it has a it has a major five chord in it, so yes, it does denote harmonic minor. Whether it uses the actual scale fragment itself in stepwise motion is a different story. House of the Rising Sun, though, one yes, definitely the the E seven chord at the end of the progression. Right, because great. Yeah. So whoever dropped in, it, it's an A minor and it has mm -hmm. an E seven chord in it. So therefore, you could use this in that song. You know, even though it's not spelled out, but uh, and House of the Rising Sun is also on Fender Play. That's by right. The way. So whoever yeah. dropped that one. Way to go. Now let's use another chord progression that we can really talk about in, in, in terms of maybe soloing. So yeah. uh, da David Bowie is the man who sold the world. Doesn't technically feature the harmonic minor scale in the song. That is, David doesn't really sing it right. specifically, but it's a good progression to practice uh, if you want to practice a scale 
um, because it has that that minor chord and that that uh, five seven. So Dylan, can you show us that? Yeah, that's a great that's a great way to put it. It's basically this is another tool that you can add when you're soloing. So in the song we've got a we've got A going to D minor, right? So so using the harmonic minor scale over that, I'm going to be playing it in D minor over the D minor chord. And then when I get to that A7, back to, to D minor. And that's basically how, how you could build out and add that major third from the A7 chord into your solo play. It's it's just everywhere. As soon as you start to get the sound in your head, you're gonna see you can't get away from it. It's everywhere, you know. Well, that's that's a great thing to mention. Now, now it's such a distinct sound, but we actually hear it used in lots of different uh, genres, lots of different. I mean, obviously, very common in classical music, and I guess yes. that's where that's where the metal world probably really mostly from which they borrow it. I think. Yes, and many other things. In uh, klezmer music. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of Latin music. Again, if we're if we're in a minor key and we hear this, yes, that's right. it. So if you've got that minor key and that that major uh, five chord, then that harmonic minor is, is implied. And and also part of the reason I think that it has this really. Um, we kept using all these words, these dark words, but but it it has a, a specific tension about it, intention yeah. in both the specifically the technical musical way, but also in an emotional way because of that half step thing in the in that the seven the seventh degree right right so as opposed instead of it being uh, just right. Yeah, you can hear it, that. There's you got to move, 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 move when you get to that seventh note right there. Yeah. In in guitar terms, it's you know one fret as opposed right. to two. And if you can find that little half step of a move, then that tension is just a little more tense, and then the the release is better. Now, uh, Chandresh Tonk is asking, is it used in grunge? You know, it's it's not going to be featured, especially in a in a, a direct way, nearly as much in grunge. And and you'll find like any genre of music that's really trying to point away from anything traditional sounding necessarily mm -hmm. as it might be thought of um, is probably not going to quote it directly. But there are plenty of grunge songs that have uh, I'm thinking of Oceans by Pearl Jam right now, like uh, plenty of grunge songs that have minor chords. It's a minor key with a major five chord. So harmonic minor harmonically is used yes absolutely in grunge and I, i'm actually music. i'm actually thinking of the ending of jeremy speaking of pearl jam, oh yeah jeremy the yeah they kind of they're vacillating on this by the way the we sun both put pearl jam set, on it the sun is setting in a strange way so i've now got the spookiest lighting possible for the halloween it's episode, perfect and i don't know how this is happening it's never happened before but i've been terrified the solstice, during the whole show yeah no i mean the, it really <laughs> as the solstice turns who knows what my lighting will be all right and um so uh thank you for dropping the comments, guitar by the way Oh yes, flamenco oh, guitar. Yeah, you so saw this. when you see uh, this sound, or <laughs> uh, the same thing, if you're hearing a lot of like, It's, it's, it's going to be all over that style of music, and it's going to be that tension and release uh, moments, especially. So you're really going to yeah. see a lot of it in flamenco guitar. Absolutely. Uh, Jonathan Lingo, that was a great question about flamenco. You're, you're dead on about yeah. that. So Dylan, can you show us uh, some more in terms of soloing uh, in this scale or this, this, this vibe that this scale creates? Can you give us some more examples? Yeah, I've got a little loop here. Let me... Uh... You just happen to have a little loop there. I just so happen this. to have a loop standing by at the ready. Well, almost at the ready. Not too much. The, the you don't, you son never loves be too this ready. guitar. This is. <laughs> yeah. Let's see.
on and on and on and on. I don't want to scare the neighbors though. You know, it's a, too much, too much of it. No, I'm just joking. But yeah, I mean, that's it. Really does point the listener and it points the ear in a direction, and that's why I think it's such it's such an interesting topic to discuss because as a player, it, you can definitely grab people's ears and you can grab your own ear and and add a new tool to your tool belt when you're playing. It's it's a neat idea. Right. So believe me, it, it applies on a lot of songs and, and hopefully we've helped kind of point out where we hear that or, or how to listen for it uh, in the future. So um, now let's get to some homework. Uh, mm. Make sure to check out Fender Play for some more info on the harmonic minor scale, though, and, and to learn the songs that you heard today. Um, but for any of you new viewers, we like to assign some things to work on throughout the week based on this episode So, or based on whatever episode we're doing. So maybe you can play these exercises on Saturday to create a haunting soundscape for your neighbors, just like Dylan did. But his neighbors, <laughs> his, his neighbors live in fear for other reasons. Um, My dog uh, left the room. He's not even, he's <laughs> terrified. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dylan, can you uh, help assign some homework here? Absolutely. So if okay. you're a beginner, uh, the first step is going to be to learn the harmonic minor scale and the key of E minor. And we've got the lessons all up on play. Uh, put harmonic minor in the search bar and and it'll pop up and learn the scale. Uh, it, it'll You'll be able to do it. And it'll be step right. one. Towards right. Moving. So take your time. Take your time with the scale. I think you're really, really happy with kind of with the the sound, you're, the vibe you're creating on, on your yeah. instrument. Yeah yourself because it's it really really opens up a lot of a lot of possibilities uh for the intermediate learn the rip to come out and play at full speed mm. by the mm. offspring dylan can you give us an example of that one please yeah i'd say that's about that's a pretty pretty quick tempo there so and then uh dylan what do we have for the advanced yeah so for the advanced play a solo using the harmonic minor scale so this means you can you can actually use just that 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 one five relationship that we talked about with a minor mm -hmm. one and a major five chord like a minor and e7 and play the a minor harmonic minor scale over it and now the other thing would be to pick a song that has that five chord in it and play through the whole progression and just stick it in when that five chord comes up that would be the the fender play challenge challenge the challenge within the challenge <laughs> that's when you yeah that, that, that's when you're big league right there when you can drop that's it in right there just for a moment just for a moment just, and it really kind of catches the ear all right so as um let's get to the the gear giveaway uh, as we always okay. promise so uh i think dylan this is you yes that's me this is my part right. okay hey guys listen so uh if you haven't watched the show before we have something called the fender play giveaway which is where a lucky fender play subscriber who's gotten at least one streak or three seven minute sessions using Fender Play is automatically entered in to win. And uh, you basically you get your name called on the show and you get to pick from guitar or bass or an amp or ukulele. There's all kinds of stuff on there. It's delivered to your house and uh, make sure you get your streaks in. And if you don't belong to Fender Play, make sure you join so we can call your name. So do you guys want to hear who won this week? I know you do. If I can get a little bit of fanfare going to announce this because it's Rod H. Rod H. H. Rod H. There you go, Rod H. Congrats to you, Rod. Excellent. And enjoy Congratulations. Your year. Yeah, your guitar, bass, amp, uke, whatever you're choosing. Uh, Dylan, what else do you have for us? Yeah, so don't forget, because we're also running the Fender Play contest currently on Fender Play Instagram. So you can win up to $1,000 in Fender, or of $1,000 in Fender just for coming up with an original uh bass guitar ukulele riffs so check out the link in the description for more and uh, details don't forget to to make sure you tag it with at fender play on instagram so that you don't miss out on the next challenge too way to go way to go uh what else see uh do we have a new collection or anything like that going on i mean we're always adding we sure do songs and stuff. What is we it? do. In fact uh, we've got the halloween collection online mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um uh, let's see here's one tune from it right here see if you can I see. It's a little high. <clears throat> it's a little high. I didn't warm up today. Anyways, um, <laughs> that was I see. It's CCR, Bad Moon Rising. But you've Bad got Moon songs Rising. like Sympathy for the Devil, Bad Moon Rising, uh, The King Moon, uh, Beat the Devil Tattoo. No, no, it's, it's, it's The Killing Moon by Echo and the Bunny Men. Did I say, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. I don't know what happened. But yeah, so that's maybe I've out haunted myself here. But yeah, check out the Halloween collection <laughs> just in time for Halloween. Enjoy it. It's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. And and I hope you guys will have fun with this this scale. It was a fun episode just kind of like 
stop everything and take a look at yeah. this kind of technical side, but but how to how to be creative with 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 uh, some some scale work there. Uh, Dylan, thank you very very much for for spending time. Thanks with for us having me. Absolutely, You're such a a fountain of knowledge. Stop. Come on. All this Kalajiri theory. Um, <laughs> if, now, if if uh, if if you have more questions uh, for Dylan, you can find him in the Fender Play community on Facebook. So most of you know Dylan. You can trust him with your guitar questions and stuff like that. So, uh, and until then, of course, um, you know, to our, our good friend Dinesh, please be safe. And and everybody yes. out there, thank you for being here. Uh, keep safe, keep practicing, and we'll see you next time. Dylan, let's go out on a G chord. You ready? Love it. Thank <laughs> you.